Omega Primetime News with Israel Lai. Hello, good evening and welcome to the News at 8 with me, Israel Lai. Tonight, Supreme Court delivers its verdict on NDC's joinder application, granting the wish of the ruling party to join President Mahama as respondent in a petition challenging his election victory. Also tonight, we bring you emotional scenes from the home of the schoolgirl who was knocked down and killed by a car while attempting to cross the George Walker Bush Highway to school. And after what appears to be subtle pressure from the creative arts industry, the president has made a U-turn on Rashid Pelpo's nomination to, as minister to the, of, of, of tourism and the creative arts. And the fourth batch We'll bring you more on the fourth batch of the President's nomination for ministerial appointments. The minority in Parliament, meanwhile, says it will boycott the betting of ministers designate scheduled this Thursday. In showbiz, popular comedian and actor Ejako pleads not guilty to charges of migrant smuggling and fraud as he makes his second appearance in court. On the international front, former Liberian President Charles Taylor has opened his appeal against a 50-year sentence by the International Criminal Court. All these and more plus the latest in sports, including updates from AFCON coming up. Now, the NDC will be co-defendants in the MPP's petition before the Supreme Court, challenging the validity of the results of the 2012 presidential election. The court, by a 6-3 majority decision today, granted the application brought by the ruling party seeking to join President John Mahama as respondent. Justice Raymond Atuguba presided over the panel. The nine-member panel which heard the motion on whether or not the NDC should be allowed to join the petition included Justices Julius Ansa, Sophia Edinira, Rose Ousu, Jones Doche, Enin Yabwa, P. Bafoboni, N. S. Badibe, and Justice Vaida Kutubanfo. The panel last week heard arguments from the lead counsel for the NDC, Chachuchikata, who said President Mahama stood on the ticket of the NDC to contest the December elections. And as such, any attempt to sideline the party in the petition filed by the NPP was a breach of their constitutional right. Chachu Chikata denied the sessions that the NDC's application for joinder was intended to delay the court process and argued that the party filed its motion three days after the filing of the petition by the NPP. Counsel for the President, Tony Litha, associated himself with the NDC's application for joinder and accordingly prayed the court to grant it. The EC, for its part, declined to react to the application and left the matter to the discretion of the court. Opposing the motion, the lead counsel for the NPP, Philip Addison, said the motion for joinder would delay the trial and therefore draw back the purpose of the new Supreme Court rules aimed at expediting the hearing of petitions challenging results of presidential elections. The motion had originally been billed to be moved by the NDC's legal team on Thursday, January 10, 2013, but was adjourned synodi after lawyers for the petitioners objected to the composition of the nine-member panel presided over by Justice William Atuguba. However, barely 24 hours after it had been raised in camera by lawyers for the petitioners, the NPP withdrew the objection. As you are aware, the petition was filed and the NDC wanted to be joined as a party. That application was heard on the 16th and the court adjourned the matter to today for a ruling. By a majority of six to three, the court has granted their application to be joined to the petition. The court has since ordered that we amend our petition to include the NDC as third respondents. And then after that, within seven days, after we have served them with the amended petition, they will file their appearance and also their answer. Um, the NDC into this action as a, a respondent, um, which means that they are now um, party to this action. But by way of legal processes, 
they've been given seven days within which to file their papers, you know, in terms of um, indicating that, yes, they are ready to join. Yes, this is, this is a document. They have to file their answer to what the petitioners have filed, um, answering point by point all the allegations which have been made by the um, uh, petitioners. And also, of course, in that document, they will indicate witnesses, if any, that they want to call. Meanwhile, unlike previous hearings where supporters of both the NDC and NPP trooped to the court premises to witness the trial, the large number of security personnel at the court premises prevented many from doing so. The police once again cordoned off the whole area around the court premises, stretching to the Kwame Nkrumah Mausoleum. Every situation goes uh, with it, uh, a special security program. We started nicely from the first day. It was quite okay. The second day, a lot of supporters besieged the place. And this time around, I think, uh, based on the second day, we were anticipating that a lot of people will come. And those who came the second day, some of them from the Daily Guard pictures were wielding some offensive weapons. So we had to strategize or step up our strategy to deal with any such situation, which we really did. Despite these interventions, some supporters of the ruling party managed to troop into the court premises and immediately made their presence felt. Hearing of the substantive case has meanwhile been adjourned to Tuesday, January 29, 2013. Right, we're joined in the studio by Anio Sabote, who was also in court for joining us. Good evening, uh, and uh, Ani, yeah, uh, thank you for making time to join. So what were the reasons assigned by the justices for this decision? Essentially, no, uh, like it's a majority decision, 6-3. So, I mean, for those who ruled in favor of the NDC to be joined in application, their reason was that, I mean, John Mama could not necessarily have become president without the support of the NDC and that it was their symbol and uh, his name was on, already on the ballot already but it was the party symbol or the party necessarily sponsored him and uh, you know so it is only necessary that if a case is brought against him to challenge his legitimacy then it's important that he's allowed to join but those who dissented the three judges who dissented point was the fact that I mean it is uh, it is it is not right I mean, they dissented. Their view was that um, they disagree because they think that ordinarily, I mean, you could stand alone, and uh, even anything at all should happen. It is only important. It is only necessary that uh, you know. It, it is only necessary that he stands and, and 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 defend himself. So you know, those are some of the points that they argued. And yeah. what, what's been the response? Well, generally the MPP seems to be going along with it, but what was the demeanor of the party or the, or the lawyers of the MPP in court? Well, it's essentially, I mean, they, they would, I mean, um, the the lead spokesperson for the MPP in the person of Gloria uh, uh, Kufu agreed that well. I mean, they, in as much as they are not happy with the verdict, they will go along with that because, I mean, the Supreme Court has spoken, now they have to go back and do their um, the homework and come back because this is not the real issue itself. This is just a, a join that from the NDC wanting to join and, and, and fight their case. And it's equally interesting. I, let me tell you one thing. During the ruling, uh, Justice uh, James Doche, for example, said that he was surprised the level of acrimony and emotions that went into the arguing the case because this is an ordinary join that that should have been filed and then we move on. You know, so now they have to go back and amend their rate and come back on the 29th of January for other matters to be discussed before we proceed again. What was the security situation? You were in court. Uh, absolutely tight. Result. Absolutely tight. Very difficult. I mean, I remember uh, last week, for example, we had some supposed or suspected ND supporters. You know, they, they camped around the... Those who came with the canes, right. Exactly. This time around, the police took over the whole of that stretch. And even right from the main entrance itself, uh, before you get to the main compound, you are searched thoroughly. You are not even allowed to stand even where they've erected a bust to even do a live uh, recordings or even speak or whatever i mean they were everywhere you enter the first thing is that you are either going up there or you have no business whatsoever you are not allowed to stand anywhere so it's, it, it was very tough and afterwards i spoke to freeman tete who told me that well i mean they're going to review their 
measures and they'll come back again if there's a need for them to maintain it they will or if they have to update, or they will do it as well. okay thank you very much and your sabute he was in sure. court today for joy news in other news the new patriotic party has announced yet another decision to affirm its unwillingness to legitimize president john Mohammed's administration because of its challenge to his declaration as president deputy minority leader in parliament dominic nitewo revealed to joy news a meeting between his colleagues in Parliament and executives of the party this afternoon concluded they will not be part of the vetting of ministers designate this Thursday. According to the Deputy Minority Leader, they are not boycotting proceedings per se, but only declining to be part of the process because of the current petition at the Supreme Court. In plain language, we are not boycotting the vetting process. We are just politely declining to participate in the process. Okay, and we are saying that if anything that will evaporate when President Mahama is kicked off by the Supreme Court, we will not participate in it. We humbly decline to participate. But anything that will stay, okay, any decision of the president that will stay beyond his tenure of office, we will participate in such deliberations. So, Ghanaian hard heart any decision that will concern directly the people of Ghana who will participate in such deliberations and you will see us in full force in Parliament that when such issues Ghanians. come it, you may think it concerns Ghanaians today in, look you can pick a minister the next they can take you out a if a Supreme Court judge for example were to be nominated by the president who will have to vet me you know that the NPP will participate in that vetting many argue the NPP is taking a shine off Ghana's democracy but Bimbala MP and Deputy Minority Leader Dominic Ntiwo disagrees. We have always been the people who have tried as much as possible to improve our democracy. We will not do anything that we want to take the shine off our democracy. There are countries where people have disputed elections and instead of doing what we have done, have resorted to using cutlasses and cordials. We can talk of our neighbors, all our neighbors, all our neighbors. Then in Africa, even in other areas outside Africa, but you, but but it's using the constitution and the courts to fight his case. So you should be praising that party. You should be praising people like this. You should be thanking them that instead of mobilizing their supporters to go onto the street, that party is using the constitutionally mandated forum. That's the courts. He has also touched on Dr. Charles Rekubrobe's open letter, asking the party to rather focus on winning the next election writing like that and so vociferous and talking to the media where was he in 2012 elections when we wanted people to talk for the party when we wanted people to fight for the party i think that we should ignore him he's an unnecessary element within the party we don't want to bother ourselves about him the party has moved beyond him he should forget about this funding thing and, and, and go and try and see what he can do to, to help build the party from the grassroots. There is nothing like founding father within the part, uh, MPP any longer. Everybody, whether you are a founding father, you are an MP, you go to the grassroots and work. He should tell us where he went to work in 2012 and then we can speak from there. Does he, does he have the feeling of these people? Has he tested what they are saying? Does he imagine what they are going through by this time? Please, I, I beg to differ. I will not want to waste my time on such people. The NPP managed to boycott President Mohammed's inaugural ceremony, yet it is set to decline participation in vetting of designate ministers to start on Thursday. In a related development, President Mahama has replaced his nominee for the Tourism and Creative Arts Ministry, Alhaji Abdul Rashid Pelpo, with Mrs. Elizabeth Ufusuejari. Alhaji Rashid Pelpo's nomination as head of one of the realigned ministries was criticized by some industry players in the creative arts sector. Film producer Sukriti Safo stated after the announcement of Alhaji Rashid Pelpo's nomination that Alhaji Pelpo might not be the right person for the job since he's not an industry person. It is unclear if the decision by the president to replace Alhaji uh, Pelpo with Mrs. Elizabeth Ofosu Jare was influenced by the criticism that followed the announcement of his nomination. Alhaji Pelpo has now been nominated as Minister of State at the presidency in charge of public-private partnerships. 
uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Fuzojai, who now replaces him, was previously nominated as Minister of State at the presidency. The other nominations contained in the president in President Mohammed's fourth batch of ministerial appointments in accordance with Article 256, Subsection 1 of the 1992 Constitution include uh, Samuel Sapong, Ashanti Region Minister, designate Eric Opoku, Brongahafo Region, EKT Ado, Central Region, Ni Lai Afote Agbo, Greater Accra Region, Bid Ziding, Upper West Region, Paul Evans Edu, Westing Region. Meanwhile, the President has assigned the following portfolios to various ministers of state designate. Al Hassan Azong, Minister of State at the Presidency in Charge of Public Sector Reform. Abdul Rashid Hassan Puopu, Minister of State at the Presidency in Charge of Public Private Partnerships. Al Haji Mustafa Ahmed, Minister of State at the Presidency in Charge of Development Authorities in the Office of the President. Fifi Kwete, Minister of State at the Presidency in Charge of Financial and Allied Institutions in the Office of the President. Alhaji Li Muna Mohamed Muniru, Minister of State at the Presidency in Charge of Human Resource Development and Scholarships, and Comfort Doye Kujo Gansas, Minister of State at the Presidency in Charge of Social and Allied Institutions in the Office of the President. The Progressive People's Party has filed an action at a Kumasi Circuit Court against Madame Kuyadonko flag bearer of the Ghana Freedom Party to recover a Toyota Tandra in her possession. The vehicle with registration number GC370612 was given to her to canvass for votes for the PPP in the December 7 elections after she had failed in a bid to file a nomination with the Electoral Commission to contest the presidential poll. She has publicly vowed not to return the vehicle, claiming it had been given out to her as a gift. However, the PPP will not let go and has filed an action at the Kumasi Circuit Court to compel her to return the vehicle. Documents on the vehicle show that it is owned by the Coconut Groove Hotel, operated by Dr. Pa Kwesi Indum, the PPP presidential candidate. The plaintiffs contend that the decision by the defendant to keep the vehicle is illegal and wrongful. A Kumasi based lawyer, Ohineba Kufo, uh, who represented the plaintiff, prayed the court to intervene to prevent Madame Donko from causing irreparable damage to the vehicle. Presiding Judge Justice Amedio directed that a copy of the writ must be served on Madame Donko for her response. Well, when this whole argument started, we sought the views of the two factions, the PPP and the GFP. Ikea Donko's dream of becoming president was shattered when she could not complete her nomination form. Ikea Danko joined the Progressive People's Party to help Dr. Indum further his dream of becoming president. It was a political marriage made in heaven, but the PPP failed to garner 1% at the end of the polls. The love affair landed on rocks, and now both partners are fighting over a vehicle. Madam Ekuya Donko says she would not return the vehicle. Guess what she would use the vehicle for? 
Mais si vous avez un cas, vous ne pouvez pas vous faire un travail. Vous ne pouvez pas vous vous pas is that well uh, uh soon will be determined by her own intransigence if indeed we realize that look she's still proving stubborn every force possible that we need to exert on her to be like us to do it possibly using the state apparatus it was a rib cracking experience for most journalists but a queer don't comment business with no prenuptial agreement we wait patiently to see how both parties settle their asset problem in court All right, uh, still to come in the bulletin, uh, we'll be going to the home of the schoolgirl who died in the accident. Who the died former presidential the hopeful of the MPP, Alan Tremanting, has yes. distanced himself from posters that have surfaced in parts of Cape Coast, suggesting that he's vying for the presidential slot of the party in 2016. In a statement signed by Kwabne Jepongo on behalf of Alan Tremanting, the former MPP presidential hopeful says neither he or any of his agents or any of his has authorized or initiated any campaign as the said posters purport to promote. We are making attempts to speak to Kwabna uh, Japong about the statement. If we get him, we'll bring you uh, what exactly he has said to that effect. But elsewhere, police in Tessano have begun investigations into the death of the schoolgirl who yet died yesterday at the La Paz section of the George Walker Bush motorway. The deceased, now confirmed as 11-year-old Faustina Paddy, was in the company of her twin brother when she was knocked down by a speeding vehicle in an attempt to cross the three-lane road. Beatrice Yadu, who visited the family, found out Faustina had indicated her own willingness to go to school yesterday. It was a sad moment for all the family members when I touched the ground of the house of 11-year-old Faustina Paddy at her post office area in Accra. Her mother, Naomi Donko, narrated what happened prior to the death of her first daughter. What was the last thing you told her before you left? I don't want to go to school. 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 And what did she tell you? I don't want to go to school. And what comes to your mind when you remember her? I don't want to go to school. 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 What was her dream? Her teary twin brother, Foster Paddy, told me how his sister died before his eyes on the highway yesterday. What so, uh, what came to your mind when that thing happened? Is this an ordinary bar dream? I tell me, if you want to go to baby Fufu, no, mommy, you better soon not do me cut down police station. Did you cry? We soon will honor you. I tell you. And then I will cry for you, Nyanyo. What do you remember about your sister? I 
The little boy is unable to talk much. Obviously, he's sad. Paddy has one prayer. Meanwhile, the Tesano Divisional MTTU says the driver, George Achu, will be prosecuted when he's discharged from hospital. The damaged car was parked at the MTTU division of the Tesano Police Command at the time Joy News got there. God bless her soul. In other news, a road accident deaths in the Ashanti region declined in 2012. There were 314 deaths from road crashes in 2012 compared to 453 the previous year. This is the first time the region has witnessed a reduction in road accidents in five years, a report by Mohamed Nouridin. The incidents of road accidents in Ghana keep growing to a great extent. It appears government has lost the will to check the menace. Regardless of road safety campaigns, recklessness and careless driving continue to lead causes of road accidents in the country. Scores of innocent Ghanaians die every day as a result of road accidents. In the Ashanti region, road accident cases increased from 2006 to 2011. It, however, dropped in 2012 mainly due to the tireless work of the police MTTU. For instance, 2,162 vehicles were involved in accidents in 2011 as against 1,797 in 2012, indicating a drop of 365 in 2011. 1,174 minor cases were recorded as against 1,000 in 2012. There were 314 deaths in 2012 compared to 453 in 2011, a reduction of 139. The Ashanti Region MTTU Commander, Superintendent Doji Hloji, attributed the achievements to massive road safety campaigns in the region. The more fines we are realizing means that drivers are being recalcitrant. And what led to these achievements, um, uh, for instance, one, uh, street enforcement of the laws. We do this. We employ the use of uh, radar guns, that are speed machines. We use the uh, acometers, and then there's this joint operation between the police and then the DVLA. We go on the road with the DVLA, and then they have the uh, expertise to check the ties, uh, the fitness of vehicles. So all these things, I mean, attributed to the result, the good result we have. The National Association of Graduate Teachers in Agra has renewed its threat to strike indefinitely if its grievances of a pay are not resolved by January 25. President of the Association, Christian Adai Poku, who blames the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission for Nagrad's wage problems, expressed great displeasure at the current situation in an interview with Joy News. Asked, he asked stakeholders to, if they believe they are to blame, the, if they are to blame for the present situation, the so teachers are not to blame rather for the present situation. The issues in contention include annual incremental credit for teachers, market premium under the single spine pay policy, and payment of vehicle maintenance allowance. He accused the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission of misrepresenting their claims. Mr. Graham and his group are going out to say that um, we agreed that uh, we want to migrate everybody onto the single spine before we talk about allowances. It is true. But the point is, we also had a roadmap that stated that by May 2011, we would have completed negotiations on allowance. As we speak, we have not gone anywhere. ...about the several engagements with the powers that be over the past two years that have come to naught, and advised the commission to tread cautiously in dealing with their issues. If we think the teachers are too many, close down some of the schools, lay off teachers, and then we will see. If we think that education is not important, that is the way we have to go. But if we think that the role of every single teacher matters, then we have to make sure that the pay, compensation for every teacher also matters in the equation of things. And that is why we think that the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission should be 
treading cautiously than the way they are doing now. He cautioned the relevant stakeholders to be mindful of the consequences of a Nagra strike in 2006, which impacted adversely on the final exams of that year. We have just three months to uh, examination. And if they think that teachers are not important, they can go ahead and continue to uh, pontificate things that are wrong. They perfectly know that they are not being fair to teachers. But they can go ahead and defend the wrongdoing, and then we will see the way forward. Despite their fiery stance, Mr. Daipoku said they are reasonable people. For six months, for eight months, negotiations are not going on. Graham himself came to Sunyan when we gathered over 4,000 teachers. He came and made a promise that by December last year, they would have concluded all discussions on allowances so that January there will be no arrears they can continue, uh, they can start um, implementing. From the October that he made that promise to the time that I am talking, we have not had a single meeting. We are ready to talk. That is if people commit themselves. But this time, we must have a roadmap. Nagrat is scheduled to meet the National Labor Commission on Wednesday.